praise the Lord and Bwana Asifiwe, what a great afternoon that the Lord has made on this Monday, 16th of January, 2023. And we thank God because of what he has been doing among us. We thank God that this is the second week of prayer. And we believe that God has been speaking to you through the portions of scripture from the Gospel of John. And today we continue with the same note and in the same rhythm, looking at John chapter 14 and 1 to 12, which I will be reading in a short while. And therefore, I want to welcome all of you who have joined in this virtual lunch hour. And I believe that the Lord shall bless us and shall be together with us. And I would want you to open your Bible in the book of John chapter 14 so that we will all walk together. Today's topic is the quest of his presence. The quest of his presence. And as you heard before, part of this or this portion of scripture is found on the farewell discourse of Jesus that we see beginning from chapter 13, uh, verse 31, all the way to 16, 33. Jesus Christ was with his disciples and Jesus gives great assurance and also gives command to his disciples. And therefore, we, when we talk about quest, we talk about the pursuit of his presence, or even the search of his presence, the chase of his presence, or going after Jesus, and therefore, the quest of his presence. So we will read together in John chapter 14, from verse number 1 to 12 where we see Jesus uh, comforting his disciples and Jesus saying that he is the way to the Father. And the Bible says in John 14 and verse number one, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, but believe also in me. In my father's house has, or my father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and, the, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is a Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. May the Lord bless his word. We have Jesus with us, my brothers and my sisters. And, but, but who is this Jesus? Who is he? And who is he in our lives? What do we do then with this Jesus? What do we need to do or to know about him? 
And those are the words that we will be looking today in the scriptures as we look at this conversation, this dialogue between Jesus and his disciples. And therefore, the first thing we see here is that Jesus is God. He is part of the Trinity. So when we quest for God's presence, we are questing or searching for Jesus, who is part of the Trinity. Jesus said, do not let your heads be troubled. You know, the disciples had uh, seen some signs that Jesus is leaving them and he is going. And they were told, believe or trust in God, but also in me. He is God the Son. Believe in God, but also believe also in me. And Jesus again went to prepare a place for us. He lived. He was born among us, or uh, he lived among us. And fast forward, he talked of his death, uh, how he will die to save. And he died, but on the third day he rose again to life. He was seen by many. The first Corinthians talks about more than 500 brothers who saw him. He lived among us after resurrection for 40 days. He went to heaven as they watched, the men of Galilee watched. And the Bible says he is seated at the right hand of God and he will come back again. The second coming, what we may call the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. Tell me of anyone else that dared to say what would happen to them and uh, even after death and uh, who undid what Jesus did for our sins. Tell me if there is any other man. Jesus is unique. He is great. It provided, these statements provided great encouragement to his disciples. I am going to prepare a place for you. They were sad. They needed to be comforted by the words of Jesus. And part of the words is to prepare a place for them. It provided great encouragement to the disciples. This is an ample provision in heaven for the disciples of Jesus, that their life was not coming to an end, but this Jesus whom they have been with, they have been walking with, he is now preparing somewhere in heaven for them, a praise for them, meaning that he is the only way to eternal life. It is unseen. But this way is very secure. Our trust in Jesus, therefore, is secure. And that is why we need to seek for him and to look for him in this generation. Are we willing to believe the words of Jesus? For example, believe in God and believe also in me. And also that he went to prepare a place for us. This gives us more comfort and more encouragement as we think about our search or our quest for God's presence. But the other thing is that Jesus will come back again. And if I go, verse 3, to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Where Jesus is, is where we will be. And therefore, we are not desperate. We are not without hope. We have one who is Jesus, and Jesus will come back again. Jesus' assumption is that the disciples knew where he was going. He is talking to all, but we see some statements from some of them. He gave a provoking statement that demanded genuine evaluation and examining of one faith. Verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. In other words, Jesus assumed that these disciples knew. And many times as we look for God, it appears as if we know, but we may not be aware. And so it calls for genuine evaluation and examination or examining of one's faith to know whether we know where we are going. Many people are like Thomas or even worse. They don't know where Jesus went and are not willing to humble themselves to submit and thus Jesus shows them the way. 
They are looking for God, but they are not willing to humble themselves that they may know this Jesus. Something that they can find this way alone, but they have no clue about the way, just like the disciples. Ask God, my brother and my sister. Ask God, the Son. Ask Jesus. He is the I am. He is God. Thomas had doubted in verse number five. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going or how we can know the way. That doubt needs to be met by the love of Jesus. Where you doubt, but you ask the Lord to help you to know him and even to seek him and even ask him for his presence. There was a double tragedy. We don't know the way. That is a double strategy, a tragedy. We don't know where you are going. Thus, we do not know the way. We don't know where you are going, Jesus. We don't know the way to get there. And therefore, Jesus had to be very categorical about the way, the absolute way, that he is the way, the truth, and even the life. And here we see the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well, verse 7. For now on you do know him and have seen him. You have known him and you have seen him. We need to know him, my brothers and sisters. We need to see him as God, our Savior. The only way to the Father is Jesus. If you really knew me, verse 7 suggests, disciples did not know Jesus. Because it's saying, if you really knew me, in verse 7, you will know my Father. And so knowing Jesus is knowing the Father. Jesus is the way because he is also the truth and the life. So Jesus is the way, and he is the way because he is also the truth and the life. Thank God for providing the sure way to get to the Father, the sure way to get to you through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The Amplified Version says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me, meaning Jesus is everything to us. If you're going to know the Father, the quest for God's presence, you got to know Jesus because he's the only way, he is the real truth, and he is the real life today. But let's see Philip's quest of knowing the Father. Philip in verse number 8 says, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. Imagine, show us the Father. Why are you taking, going around the circles? Just show us the Father, Jesus, Philip told him, and that will be enough for us. We will be satisfied in another way. That will be sufficient. I am not stopping. In other words, for Philip, he had the quest to know Jesus, the search of Jesus. He wanted to know who he is. I am not stopping before I know for sure who Jesus is. That is what Philip was, his questions was trying to show. I want to know Jesus. The quest, the pursuit, the search, the chase to go after Jesus. I want to know him. Jesus and the Father. I want to know them. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And what did Jesus answer Philip in verse number 9? Do you know me? Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time. Don't you know me, Philip? Philip was one of the disciples. Don't you know me? Even after I have been with you for such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words, uh, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me. How, who is doing his work? If you see Jesus, you see the Father. He is the only way. The knowledge of Jesus leads us to the knowledge of the Father, the knowledge of Jesus. Philip, I have been with you here. Now you have seen me. If you have seen me, now you know the Father. In other words, there is no separation, the Trinity of God, God the Father and God the Son. In chapter 1, verse 18, no one, the Bible says in John 1, 18, no one has ever seen God. 
but the one and only, the only begotten son who is at the father's side, meaning Jesus is at the father's side. He has made him known. No other way to know the father, therefore. It is only Jesus who has seen the Father, who has seen God. But He is the only begotten Son of God who is at the Father's side. He has made Him known. And no one, no, no other way to know the Father. W want to show the Father? Therefore show Jesus. When you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus and therefore Philip in other words wanted a direct revelation of the father as the only satisfactory it is the same as Moses asked Lord I want to see your glory I want you I, I am longing for you show me your glory this could be the same thing that Philip was questing for was searching for he wanted the direct revelation of the Father. He wanted to be satisfied. He wanted God to pass before him. He, I want to see you, Jesus. The word Jesus spoke, he never spoke on his own authority, but the Father living in Jesus. And he's the same Father who was doing the work that Jesus was doing. We have more opportunity to see and know Jesus today. We are not to be like Philip. But are we willing to know Jesus? Are we even willing to break, to be broken for him and tell him, show us, show us, we don't know, show us. Philip was saying, I have been seeing you walk around, but show us the Father and that will be enough. Today we have many opportunities to see Jesus, to know the Father through Jesus Christ. But are we willing to know Jesus? The profound truth is that God had made himself known in Jesus, the incarnation. The knowledge of Jesus leads to the knowledge about God. And so many people say, I just want the Lord, I love the Lord, I love God. But the issues of Jesus, they have nothing to do with them. But I want to submit to you today that there is no way you can know the Father or God without knowing, having a knowledge of Jesus. Because the knowledge of Jesus leads to the knowledge about God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, 1 to 4, the Bible says, in the past... God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets of many times and in various ways. Verse 2, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Verse number 3, the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is superior to others. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. Do you want the radiance of God's glory? You need the Son. He's the one who speaks to us these days, the brass days. In Colossians 1.15, the Bible says the Son is the image of the invisible God. When you see the Son, you see the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creations. Verse 16, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Verse 17, he is before all things and in him all things hold Together, The Son is a radiance of God's glory. He is the image of the invisible God. When you meet Jesus, therefore, you see the image of the invisible God. When you see, you meet Jesus, you have the radiance of God's glory in your life. 
Therefore, how can you quest for God? How can you quest for God's blessings and you don't allow Jesus and the claims that he made, which are true. His word is true. He speaks his powerful word as we have read in Hebrews. And that word is true. You can trust him and therefore you will have reached uh, the quest or you, will, you, will, you would have reached God. Brothers and sisters, the challenge today is that many are willing to believe all sorts of things, but they are not willing to believe in Jesus. They want to believe everything else, but they are not willing to believe in Jesus. Believe in their ancestors. What their ancestors have already said, they believe in the celebs and celebrity, but they don't want to live, believe in Jesus. Many people have gone back to traditionaries, the culture going, they say they are going back to the roots. And our roots is not in the culture, our root is in God, for we were created in the image and the rightness of our first parents were Adam and Eve and many have even gone back to witchcraft. They think that Jesus is not as powerful to help them in the current day and even in the current situation. Yet Jesus, he is in the Father. We have the Father and the Father is in him as we have seen and he is God. And therefore Jesus Christ is the answer Let's think a little bit about Philip's quest or search for knowing the Father. You know, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And even as we bring this to a conclusion, let's look at Philip. He is saying we will be satisfied. What hasn't Philip seen Jesus doing throughout the journey as an apostle of Jesus Christ? In other words, Philip had been walking with Jesus. In fact, from when he was called in the book of John and he went for his brother Nathaniel, he has been with Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, don't you know me, Philip? In other words, Philip, you need to know me. You need, your search needs to come to a point when you recognize who I am. After I have been among you such a long time, in the whole of the ministry of Jesus, this being a dialogue ending to the end of the life of Jesus or for Jesus to die, Jesus thought that Philip already knew. Brothers and sisters, Philip was there when Jesus was baptized and a voice came from heaven. Philip was there when even demons would acknowledge that Jesus is the son of God. Uh, Philip was there when the paralytic had been healed, when the four men dropped. Philip was there when the man having leprosy had been asked, uh, Lord, if you are willing, heal me, and God healed him. Philip was there when many things that Jesus was doing were there. Philip had been there. He had witnessed everything else. He was called as one of the apostles. And now he is saying, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. For us to know God better, we need to look for Jesus. We need to pursue Jesus in everything that we do. Because when we get to know Jesus, then we get to know the Father. And therefore, we will do exploits for his name. The words I say to you, Jesus told Philip, I do not speak on my own authority, rather it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. So the things that uh, Philip had already witnessed, it is Jesus who had, it is God the Father who had been doing it through Jesus Christ. And that is why the Jesus is uh, asking Philip, don't you know the Father? The Father is in me. I am the one who have been the full representation of God, our Father. I am the one who has been living. Uh, it is God the Father who has been living in me. Uh, Jesus uh, was telling Philip, I am the image of the invisible God. Uh, Jesus was telling Philip, uh, it is through me that all these things were done. And not only through all these things, even what 
Paul talked about the creation. And so Philip just needed to know Jesus and to acknowledge and believe in him. And then things will be okay. He would have reached his goal of the quest of knowing his presence. I know we can never know God enough, but Philip would have begun this journey and I believe he began this journey, the journey of faith, the journey that he needed to have begun of the quest of his presence. And therefore, we will go to pray in the name of Jesus, having our trust and hope in God that we will find Jesus as Philip was told that you need to see me, you need to know me now, you know me, you know the Father. May we experience the Father today, even as we pray and even as we seek the Lord, because Jesus Christ is the answer. We can trust him when we find him. We find the Father. We don't need to look for any other evidence anywhere. We don't need to look for God anywhere else. We don't need only God alone. It's only through Jesus. And that is what Jesus was telling Philip. Could we go to God through Jesus Christ? And when we do that, we will have found God's presence. May we all pray together even as we continue in the, as we end this meeting in Jesus name just go before the Lord and cry to him and tell him I want to know you just like Philip I want to know you who are you in my life just like Thomas I don't know where you are going but I want to get there father in the name of Jesus, may you have your way in our lives, that we may know you, Jehovah God, that our hearts may not be troubled, even in this other, comparing with the scenario of the apostles, Lord, and the challenges of our day, that our hearts may not be troubled, that we may believe in you, Lord, we may trust in you, and also trust in Jesus Christ, because we know having you, Jesus, the knowledge about you, Lord Jesus, is having everything about God. Lord, when we have met you, when we have seen you, we have seen the Lord. And therefore, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for every person who is watching and everyone who is following today, that they may know you. The quest of God's presence is a quest to know you, Jesus, that we may know you, Lord. You are the radiance of God's glory. You are the power behind our salvation. You you did everything on the cross and today we are saved by the very same blood. Oh yes, these last days you are speaking to us, oh God Almighty, as you did through to our ancestors, through the prophets in many times and in various ways. In these last days you are speaking to us uh, through your son whom you appointed heir of all things uh, and through whom he uh, also you made the universe. And uh, Jesus, you are the radiance of God's glory glory, the exact representation of his being. You are the image of the invisible God. All things were created by you. Help us, Lord, to know you, Jesus, to see you, Jesus, to acknowledge you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, that we may have you in our lives, that we may go forth and speak your word and represent you everywhere. For we have seen you, Jesus. And when we see you, Jesus, we have seen our our Father, our Father who art in heaven, thank you, Lord, that it is only through you that we may be able to stand. It's only through you, Lord, that we may be able to see God. Jesus, you are the only way to the Father. May you have your way in our lives. I pray for each and every one who is watching me this afternoon that God Almighty they make they may have the quest of your of your presence oh God and that you may walk with them Lord even as we pray and fast that God we will experience you in our pursuit for your presence we will meet with you your name shall be glorified and your name shall be lifted up Lord help us to believe in you Jesus and 
to believe in our Father because we know you have a great plan for us. Thank you that you have given us the way. You have given us the truth. You have given us the life. May you help us to live in the truth. May you help us to live in the life. May your name be glorified and lifted up. There is none besides you, Jehovah God. Help us, Lord, that as Thomas wanted to be sure that he knows the way, that we will stand knowing that we belong to you, Jesus, and that we have eternal life through you, Jesus Christ, and that in everything your name will be glorified. Help us to be with Philip, that, Lord, we may have the sufficiency of God. We want to know you, Father, and therefore we want to know you, Jesus, because you are in the Father. Lord, may you have your way in our lives. Be glorified and lifted up. Help us to comprehend. For now the disciples were not very clear. But today in the dispensation we live in, it is clear to us that Jesus Christ you came. It is clear that Jesus Christ you dwelt among us. It is clear that Jesus Christ you died. It is clear that Jesus Christ you rose from the dead. It is clear that Jesus Christ you are our Redeemer. May you have your way in our lives in the name of the Lord and that Jesus Christ you will come back again. Oh Father the assurance of your powerful word. The powerful word that when we believe in it we have faith in you. Lord may you remember us. May you bless us. We know that in the Father's place there are many in the Father's place there are many rooms and if it were not so you would have told us but you want to prepare a place for us Jehovah it is only Jesus it is only you who would talk about the future talk about heaven talk about eternal life it is only you Jesus you talked even about your death other than any other man who has ever lived it is only you we believe in your powerful word we believe in you Lord and that is why we dedicate our life to seek for you to trust in you to look to you to be in your presence in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ blessed be the name of the Lord may you have your way father as we go on praying have your way be glorified in our day father be seen in our day Lord may we find you Jesus may we acknowledge you may we see you may your presence walk with us this year Lord as we look at you Jehovah as we see you and as we believe in you may we be in your presence that this will be the ear in your presence oh God because our theme is is in his presence that we may experience you in everything in the name of the Lord that we will believe in this truth we will follow the way oh God the real way oh father the only way we will believe in the real truth the truth about you the word that liveth forevermore lord may you have your way may you be glorified and may you be lifted up be exalted and be honored father in heaven and may you have your way in our lives in a very special way to the glory and honor of the name of jesus be magnified lord and be exalted in jesus name we pray and believe Amen and amen. So God bless you so much. Let's continue reading uh, John chapter 14. Tomorrow we continue from where we have left, even as we look at the topic, the quest of God's blessings. And my desire and my prayer is that by the end of this, God's blessings will be with us. Jesus will be with us. God bless you and have a wonderful afternoon. Amen and amen.